Welcome back to Daytime Ottawa. Big weekend for pet lovers mm -hmm. out there because the Ottawa Pet Expo is happening November 9th and 10th. And here to tell us all about it and also to share uh, some of the information that you'll be able to learn is first up, actually, we have two guests. The first one is Frost Turcotte and her lovely pal, Sydney, Sydney. who is just <laughs> chilling under the table She's there. She's just happy to be Grounding. here talking about the Pet Expo <laughs> this right. weekend. And you're here from uh, Valley Mastiff Rescue. You're, of course, the owner there. Yes, I'm the founder. And what is it that you do? Because you're going to be at the expo. We're going to be at the expo for the second year. And what we do is we have a sanctuary right. for dogs, for mastiffs. And we welcome the homeless and the neglected and sick dogs like Sydney that was um, sadly a victim of, of terrible cruelty and neglect. Mm. So she's with us to get the medical care that she needs. And uh, she's actually doing very well. Yeah, and you've had a lot of people step up from the community as well. Tell us a little bit about that, that story because it's been so wonderful. I know. We launched Operation Sydney in August so we can try to raise the 12000 we needed for her surgeries. Um, actually, what happened is her story went around the world. Yeah. We got donations from as far as Africa and um, Germany and France and, and um, England and Australia. So Sydney is quite quite the star. Well, Sydney's interested in some of the other dogs that are <laughs> yeah. in the room yeah. right now, that's if you're wondering. That's why she got up. Um, <laughs> so she actually caught the eye of Don Cherry. Yes, she did. Uh, Sydney got a wonderful box of donations from uh, Don Cherry that he took the time to autograph some books for her and some toys that we're going to be doing a silent auction to try to raise some money for her. That's what wonderful. And look at these yeah. beautiful collars you've brought along here. And these are quite special. Tell yeah. us a little bit about so these. So these are Maasai collars. They're from um, Africa. And it's actually um, a sustainable effort. Right. Uh, there is a cooperative of 120 women making these by hand. Wow. Every collar is, is unique. No two are the same. And they're all hand beaded. Yeah, they're gorgeous. So every collar takes about 15 hours to make. Wow. And these are going to be available at the Pet Expo? These are going to be featured at the Pet Expo at our booth, Valley Mastiff Rescue, and every uh, cent is going to be going towards Operation Sydney. Oh, that's fantastic. For her care. And there's something for everyone at the Ottawa Pet Expo there as well. There is. I mean, it's just fun and games, and it's the best weekend we anticipated every year, and we just have fun. And we're going to have uh, Ben there. And Ben is a 180-pound mastiff. Oh, my wow, goodness. That's <laughs> bigger than me. So that's <laughs> bigger than all four dogs that are standing yeah. by put together. So we're going to thank you, thank France, you. for coming. Thank we really appreciate thank it. And, of course, Sydney. people can go and visit you. We're going to invite Corey thank Allard. You. He is a grooming yeah. assistant with Posh Puppies to come on over here. And we're going to talk a little bit about grooming. Corey, how are you? How Welcome are you? back to the show. Good to have you here. How He's got you? the tools, tools of the fun. trade. Yeah. And it's important to choose the right tool for it the is. right for the right pet as well, Corey. Tell it us is. a little bit about some of the differences of, of some of the tools uh, of the trade. So depending on what kind of dog you have, whether it's a shedding or non-shedding dog, uh, that changes up your tool. Uh, so our first little one here is a heavy shedder. Okay. So we want to use something called the Furminator, which oh, is the Furminator. The Furminator. Nice. Furminator. Oh, it's a, it would be back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's probably the best uh, tool for grooming since the invention of the bathtub. So why like, is that? <laughs> what, what makes it uh, so good? Corey? It just works really well. It digs into their undercoat mm -hmm. and actually pulls the hair out. Oh. Of their undercoat, so just a couple little brushes, and you can see how much. And comes it out. also stays in the comb right. too, which it is does, important. It does, yeah. Right? Um, and they come with different attachments and stuff now as well. You can even stick it on your vacuum so that the hair is not flying all over your house. Oh, oh really? It's getting sucked right into your vacuum. Um, so, so for a shedding dog like this, how often should you groom your dog? Uh, it depends on the dog. Uh, some dogs shed a lot, so right. once a week is probably a good idea for those guys. Right. Um, other shorter haired dogs that don't shed as much could probably go up to six weeks. Is there a good time to brush your dog, like uh, during the day, uh, morning, It or doesn't night? really matter. Whenever is most convenient for you, I don't think they have a time frame in mind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But definitely during spring and fall uh, increases the amount of shedding that's happening. So oh, right, to increase the amount that you're brushing them out and grooming right. is not a bad idea. All right. Well, why don't we bring another uh, pup here because we'd like to get yeah. them all on, on air because so they're just so cute. She has a pink tail. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I just that. noticed that as well. She's a very pretty little tail over there. Oh, oh you can wander know. around. Yeah, Come here. Hang out too. <laughs> they can hang so out. It's fine. That was right. this one. 
So this is Mika. Hi, Again, Mika. Uh, Mika's a heavy shed, um, but because she's a long-haired dog, mm -hmm. your technique is going to be a little different. Okay. Are you still, still using the Furminator? Go, yep, still going okay. with the Furminator. Um, and you still want to go the direction of the hair, but you actually want to lift up the overcoat okay. and brush okay. underneath. Why is that, Corey? Um, so that you make sure you're actually getting the undercoat rather than right. just smoothing the top coat down. I see. Okay. Um, this actually pulls out the undercoat then. Kind of looks like you're giving her hair a little bit of an 80s tease. It does, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a glam rocker, Mika. Yeah. Exactly. All right. <laughs> and what kind of dog is she? Uh, she's a Pomeranian Chihuahua cross. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very beautiful dog. dog. Yeah, what a great good. temperament, too. And a, a, a very pretty tail, <laughs> yeah, of course. She has her, her pink tail. Is that something else you guys do at Posh uh, Puppies? Yeah, we do do that at Posh yeah. Puppies. Um, we'll dye any color you want your dog to right. be. Right. <laughs> All right. so you have a little bit of gem Copeland. going on. Did everyone <laughs> yeah. remember she used to have the television show and she'd bring her pink dog? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was right here on Rogers, it. too, way back, yeah. so back in the day. Thank you very much, Mika. Maybe you can bring in one more yeah. dog. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait. Is it going to be Charlie or is it going to be Charlie's friend? I will bring okay. Charlie. Oh, Charlie! Yay, Charlie! So Hi, Charlie is a good example of a non-shedding dog. Okay. okay. So here's where your tools are going to change. Um, I find the slicker brush is probably the best for these guys, in my personal okay. opinion. It looks a bit like a torture instrument. Yes, it does. <laughs> but okay um, but it does work really well. It and it doesn't hurt. Hair out. It right. doesn't hurt, no. And it's important to, as you said earlier, probably once a week as well, so you don't get the knots. Exactly, so you don't especially harm with these dog. non shedding dogs. Uh, they tend to knot up, especially around their legs and their bellies, the small guys. Right. right. Um, so doing this once a week. Uh, will help prevent and let them get their hair long and luxurious like some people like it. Right. Um, that prevents us from having to shave them down when they come in. And it also helps Charlie get a date too. Exactly. Right? Yeah. exactly. He's, still, he's a teenager, right? <laughs> yeah. He's still a pup. Now, uh, one thing I want to ask is um, shampooing. How often should you be shampooing your dog? Uh, you don't want to shampoo too often mm -hmm. because you don't want to dry out their skin. Okay. Uh, every six to eight weeks oh, is okay. probably sufficient to keep their coat clean and uh, soft. Right, Excellent. Right, right. Now, let's talk about Oral hygiene. Yes, you brought, brought some, some toothpaste. Yeah. I did, yes. So, oral hygiene is something that's overlooked a lot with animals. Yeah. Uh, we brush our teeth every day. Uh, they should probably get the same luxury okay. um, to help maintain their teeth. Uh, they're prone to the same oral diseases that we are. Right. Uh, so, there's a lot of different options out there. There's the brushes that usually come double-ended. Right. And my personal favorite is the finger brush. Oh, um, that's a good idea. I didn't even know that yeah. So then you c it's a lot easier to get around their mouths right. um, and get into the nooks and crannies with a finger rather than these guys. Well, probably good to start when your dog is a puppy as well, exactly, right? So they yeah. get used to it. Because yeah. if you get an older dog that's not yeah, quite they don't used tend to it, it like can be problematic. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can we get the last dog yeah. in? Because we want to yeah. make sure that we get all <laughs> four of them in. Because he'll be so jealous. Yeah. You know? yeah. get so everyone. this is Mavi. This is actually my dog. Um, and he is a very low shed. Yeah. Um, so I only have to brush him probably once every eight weeks. Oh, low And what, uh, what breed? Uh, he's a miniature pincher. Oh, so very nice. Oh, my well, goodness. We are so happy so to have cute. all of you on our show today. You yes. are adorable. And we thank you so thank much you for so sharing much. all these tips. Yeah. Thank you so much. And people can come and visit you at, at the Ottawa Absolutely. Pit Absolutely. Come by our well. booth. And uh, we can do any Furminator demos or toothbrushing demos anybody wants. And you can Terrific. bring your pets too. Oh, that's which is the yeah. great best part. Thing. So yeah. they can really, you can bring in your pets and then you can have them brushed up a little bit and prettied up, of course, which is wonderful. We got a great segment coming up next on tires because it is getting colder. And so you got to make sure that you're safe on the roads out there. So we got some great tips after the break. Stay tuned. De, d'autres tribus qui, qui sont en train d'apprendre à faire ces colliers-là. Comment vous êtes venu à faire cette association-là avec ce groupe-là, justement? Euh, on on s'est associé de pair avec une, une compagnie de distribution québécoise qui okay. s'appelle Innovago. Okay. Okay. Donc, eux nous aident à importer les colliers, s'occupent de, de faire toutes les transactions, puis nous, euh, finalement, on offre, euh, on offre les colliers au Pet Expo pour les gens. Okay. Puis, euh, on a plusieurs grandeurs. On a de 14 pouces à 24 pouces. Bon. Puis on a aussi des belles laisses. Hey, oui, ça, ça, va, ça va avec. Écoute, je regarde, je regarde ce, ce nez. Moi, je trouve que c'est un gros chien. Puis tu me disais, pour, pour sa race de chien, elle est toute petite. Pardon? Elle est toute petite. Elle est toute petite. Elle pèse combien, elle? Sydney, euh, quand elle est arrivée au refuge, elle pesait malheureusement juste 89 livres. Okay, Donc, on parlait bon. de, de... Elle était vraiment, vraiment oui, trop mince. Okay. Trop, trop mince. Okay. Euh, Aujourd'hui, elle pèse 110. Mais le poids moyen est habituellement 150. 
OK. <rire> oui. Madame, c'est mon poids santé, ça, probablement. <rire> oui. Puis, puis un, un, je veux dire, le tour d'un collier pour un ouais. mastif, souvent, on parle de 34 pouces. Donc, souvent, les ceintures d'un homme, c'est un tour de taille. taille. Wow, c'est impressionnant. C'est vraiment ça. impressionnant. Mais ça, c'est le genre de chien qui, qui on on n'est pas en appartement avec un chien comme ça. On veut, avoir, on veut pouvoir le faire courir, courir dehors. dehors c'est un peu un mythe. Je veux dire, c'est des chiens qui sont très calmes. Ah, okay. Donc, un chien calme n'a pas, pas besoin de beaucoup d'espace. Euh, Mais quand ça bouge, ça fait du bruit, par exemple. Quand ça bouge, <rire> quand ça bouge, ça bouge. Quand ça prend de la place, ça prend de la place. Est on est gros. Ouais. On, 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 tasse les, on tasse les fesses. Mais vraiment, l'exercice, le ouais. c'est très minime. Okay. Une petite marche, puis souvent, ils vont arrêter. Ils vont me regarder en voulant dire « J'en ai assez, assez. <rire> on, à la maison. on retourne à la maison. Okay. » C'est quoi la, la plus grande qualité de ces chiens-là? Les mastiffs, c'est le calme. Ouais. Ah, oui, c'est hein. le calme. J'adore le, le fait qu'on peut en avoir cinq, six. Puis... Oh, c'est un peu comme ça. ça on, on est relax, ça mange. ça mange. Mais le, le trait le plus beau, c'est la loyauté. Ouais. Ouais. C'est la loyauté envers la famille et, et le maître. C'est indéniable. Là, je veux dire, on ne peut pas se lever pour aller même à la salle de bain sans que le chien nous suive. Ah, c'est beau! Si vous en avez, oh, oh là là! Oh là là! Là, elle est bien! Sa zone de confort. Et tu en as combien des chiens comme ça à ton refuge? Euh, présentement, au refuge, on en a 11. Euh, tous qui ont besoin des, des soins médicaux, des, ouais. des opérations, des chirurgies. Plusieurs qui attendent l'adoption. Donc, okay. notre, notre, le but de notre refuge, dans le fond, c'est de, de les rendre en santé. On fait un petit peu de réhabilitation. Donc, moi, je suis comportementaliste. Donc, j'adresse les petits problèmes de, de comportement. Puis ensuite, on les met en, ado en adoption. Donc, mm. un peu comme une SPCA. Oui. Même genre, les gens viennent au refuge, peuvent nous visiter, choisir un animal, prendre une marche. Puis, on a un processus d'adoption qui s'enclenche à ce moment-là. Donc, vous notre but, les remettez là. en forme euh, ouais. avant, avant Puis, comme tu as dit, ils sont tellement maîtres. calmes. Donc, c'est parfait pour une ouais. famille, justement. Fait que notre but ultime, c'est de les voir dans une ouais. famille. Une bonne famille. Si, euh, si je veux... Est-ce que c'est juste au Pet Expo qu'on peut acheter les colliers ou on peut passer... Euh, on peut euh, t'appeler... Euh, on on a un petit spécial au Pet Expo en okay. fin de semaine. Donc, euh, on a un petit spécial. On va avoir une belle sélection de colliers. Puis, on peut aussi passer par le site web qui okay. est valleymastifrescue.com et on fonctionne à ce moment-là par courriel, puis okay. on peut les envoyer par la poste. On en a déjà euh, envoyé deux en Allemagne. Bon, bon. bon. bravo. Et nous, on vous invite à, à acheter des ça. colliers. Vous allez... pour une bonne cause, finalement, ben, oui. pour soigner notre belle Sydney, si qui voilà. a besoin, finalement. Merci beaucoup d'être venu nous oui. voir. Merci. Nous, on fait une petite pause. Puis après, on va en cuisine, parce qu'on va vous montrer des sculptures de bois. On parle à M. Paul Réaume, qui nous parle de la 26e édition de l'exposition de sculptures de pyrogravure d'Ottawa. Vous écoutez entre nous sur les ondes de TV Rogers. <rire> 